is the betrayer of the Lord? And this is uh, the question posed by the disciples. And from today's scripture, we will know he is Judas Iscariot, and he betrayed Jesus by the seal of a kiss. And so every time when we think about Judas, we know that he is an extremely evil and hated person. So in history, Judas is a name that is cursed. No one named himself Judas or named his uh, child Judas. Have you ever knew anybody by the name of Judas? If there is, please let me know. So he is among the cursed. He is a typical example of those who reject the love of God. In my previous church, a brother spoke to us before about the end times, and the Bible tells us that the end times, in the end times, there will be the antichrist, and he is a man of lawlessness. And when he comes, he will exalt himself to be like God, and he will persecute the church, and eventually. He will be thrown into the lake, lake of fire by God, and this is what we read in the book of Revelation. So he's an extremely terrible person, and we know the end times will be here very soon, and he will appear very fast. And so this brother asked us, "If I let you choose, would you rather be Judas or to be the Antichrist?" So people answer, "I don't know. I just know I don't want to be either. I don't know why you ask this question." But I think his point is, who do you think is worse? Is it Judas or is it the Antichrist? So we all know that on earth, terrible people uh, like rapists, like like. Murder. So we compare who is more terrible. You know, this criminal is worse than that criminal. But there's a kind of person which is worse to the extreme. Even when you mention his name, you will, you will be so, uh, you will so, you will be so hateful of the person because he's, he he is so sinful. And now, why Judas is so evil? Because when the greatest love is revealed to him, he not only rejects, but he uses the greatest betrayer to respond to that greatest love. So our Lord Jesus called him among the twelve disciples, so that Judas can personally see the glorious image of the Lord. And every miracle performed by the incarnated Lord, every message he preached, Judas could hear it for himself. And our Lord never ostracized him or gave him the cold shoulder. How he treated John and Peter, he also treated Judas the same way. And eventually, at the Last Supper, when Jesus washed the feet of his twelve disciples, that includes Judas. He also washed Judas' feet. And eventually, our Lord dipped the bread and handed it over to Judas. And we know that at that moment. The Bible tells us that Satan entered into Judas, and in all this, God revealed His love to Judas to bring him back. But he he kept, but yet he still betrayed Jesus with thirty pieces of silver and with a kiss. And no matter how we think about it, we do not understand. So this there is this spiritual meaning. So you think about it. If a person is loving you so selflessly, even if you do not accept his love, you wouldn't also go and frame him. So this Judas is very strange. He has this enmity in his spirit, and he used the most terrible and most hypocritical way to betray Jesus. So at the Last Supper, how the Bible says, Satan put the thought. Of betrayer into the heart of Judas, so, and Satan entered into him to fill him, and he is completely used by Satan to be a tool to betray Jesus. 
So the Bible says it all very clearly. Now Satan entered into his heart to fill him, and when that happens, he didn't lose his mind, but he's very clear. He's very decisive, and he he also comes with good strategy to betray the Lord. So today we see that those who truly opposes Christ and the church, they are also like. Like this, they are not in a trance or in a blurry mind, and then they go against God. But the more they are filled by this by Satan, the more they are clear-minded and logical, and they come with good plans and system to oppose Christ. Just as uh, Judas, he also deceived all the rest of the disciples because none of the disciples can recognize him to be the betrayer. So in the same way, today the Antichrist work also deceives. Also deceive the whole world, and deceive the church, and deceive God's saints. Only until the Lord Himself exposes this betrayer and this deceiver. So, for us who are living in this era, we have to prepare our heart, especially when we are serving the Lord. The Lord not just tell us that I have told you beforehand. So when that thing happen or when apostasy happen, you will not be shocked. You will not fall, but you know that this is to fulfill, to fulfill what the scripture says. So just this past week, I have this、um, online meeting with my coworkers in China, and I'm really glad to see them. And when we are together, we have a lot of words in our hearts, and I told them. So I told them when we look at the serving of the Lord and、uh, the Apostle Paul, there's always some betrayer. So I told them I've been with them from two zero one zero to two zero one seven till I'm being、uh, arrested.、Uh, if you recall these seven years, from two zero one zero, I stepped into the land of China to to sow seeds to build. God's church, one by one. God's fellowship, one by one. And we saw、um, revival in our special meetings, and every time people come, and the word spreads faster. But when it comes to a point, what happens? No, it's not just a pastor is being arrested for for preaching, but it's not just that. But up to a point, we realize. Um, be- things of betrayal happened. All of you are only concerned that pastor is being arrested. I cannot, and I cannot go into China anymore to preach. But besides this, just around the time when I'm arrested and I cannot get into China, just around that timing, a, a group, of, a group of people, they grow tired of hearing the gospel, and they seek another kind of gospel, another kind of power, another kind of spiritual experience. And so, in the life church fellowships, through what we have, through the work we have done, they took away one third of the people from the fellowship. So, this is such a betrayal, such apostasy. So, this kind of thing happened to the Lord, happened to Apostle Paul, and also it also happened to、uh, people who followed the Lord throughout history, because the weeds are also sown among the wheat. But eventually, they will be exposed. But when all these things happen, you will understand how the Lord uses pastor's mouth to continue to preach this word online, and so that there are even more people who hear this message in China and in overseas regions, and and that happens because of your prayer. And so I urge them with all these words and with tears, and the Holy Spirit touch me to warn them. I told them、uh, that I cannot meet you personally, the ten over of you. I couldn't stand in your midst to、uh, counsel you, to rebuke you, or to comfort you. But online, let me first tell you: if one day you choose to depart from this path, you are not just departing from the team of、uh, Pastor Vincent. 
I'm just a human, but you are departing from the gospel which calls you initially. Initially, when you hear the gospel, you were full of joy, you were liberated, and you come together even in suffering, you gather, and even in the kind of national state, you also take the risk to meet for Christ. But one day, if you depart from this path and you seek another kind of power or experience, then in that moment, Pastor first tell you, I will not be surprised because such things are, will, will abound in the end times. And at that moment, I will have mercy on you. I will empathize with you. But today, if you hear, if you hear my words of warnings and you are very fearful in your heart and you ask pastor to pray for you and you humble yourself and ask God to guard you from taking the wrong path, then I will pray for you. So we as servants of God, Sometimes when we are with you, who likes to hear words of warning? Everyone loves to hear words of love and comfort. Everybody likes those words. But at the most critical time, the Lord's Church must hear the words of warning. Because without warning, how can people be awakened? How can people come to their senses? And how to be aware of the evil work? So without warning, how can they discern between wheat and wheat and goats and sheep? So I told them, I talked to them for two hours, many words. Now everyone have a heavy heart, but eventually we ended the conversation and I said, I pray that even if you do not see me in person, you must keep hearing the word of God. You must keep guarding your heart for the sake of God's sheep. You must guard your ears, guard your eyes and not to be wavered just because of the worldly interests and guard your heart against greed, guard against the, the urge to gain personal interests. Because as we draw near to the end times, we know that apostasy, things that tempt people to commit sin, abound. All these things abound. So we must warn the church of God in this way. And so today when we read about Judas, we need to reflect on this area. When you hear this word, when you hear Pastor Vincent, you do not just hear it like this. You must consider whether what Pastor Vincent talk, uh, talk about is within the Bible or outside the Bible. So when we look at Judas' betrayer, another thing we need to receive is without Judas, how can the words of the Scripture scripture be fulfilled. How would the Lord go to the cross? And if the Lord didn't go to the cross, die and resurrect and dominate on the throne, then how can the Holy Spirit come upon us? And without the Holy Spirit, how can the apostles be filled by the Holy Spirit and preach the gospel to the ends of the world? So in the evil work of the devil, God also fulfilled beautiful things to, to finish the work of salvation and then Give the Holy Spirit. So you need to un remember that the evil work cannot win over God and His plan. Just like our Joseph, he told his brothers, what you have done, you meant, you meant harm. But God's intention is good that through this matter, He will save many lives. So when we read about Judas, when we read about the life of the apostles, we will not be afraid of being betrayed or we will not be afraid of apostasy but in our heart we will be prepared now the apostles they wrote the Bible even though in the end Paul wrote about people deserting him demons, demons uh, deserting him and when he stood trial uh, the disciples left Paul but Paul wrote that the Lord stood by his side so you must not give yourself any excuses. You know, there's no one else except for me, myself, who says, the Lord is with you. And through your suffering, God also fulfilled great things. So we must open our eyes to see the development of history. And so when the evil work comes, those who truly belong to the Lord, God's people, they will, they will be found and they will suffer, they will be humbled, humbled and they will come before the Lord. So this is the perspective we should hold on to. And so today let's read about Judas and ponder about his 
life and receive the warning. Let's turn to John chapter 13. So last week, we stopped at verse 20, but let's uh, go back to verse 18. Because uh, from verse 18, uh, it was clearly mentioned about Judas. So Jesus said, I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. So he who shares my bread refers to the one intimate with me. I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am He. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send, accepts me. And whoever accepts me, accepts the one who sent me. So, why did the Lord tell his disciples this before he was betrayed by Judas. It is, it is not that uh, our Lord is panicked and uh, helpless. Uh, or it's, it's not as if the, the Lord was shocked to realize someone betrayed him. Now, Judas' betrayer is not an accident. It is also not something that the Lord did not know. Perhaps for we humans, we, we may not know. But the all-knowing Lord, He already knew all these things beforehand. And so He told the disciples beforehand so that when Judas' betrayal happened, it is not because God was um, not aware. Because if the Lord do not know it, how can we believe Him? So the Lord mentioned it first in order to protect uh, the faith of the disciples. So many prophecies and warnings in the Bible is to prepare our hearts so that we will not be surprised or shocked when certain things happen, so that we will not be discouraged and we will not stumble. So let's continue reading. Now within the sovereignty of the Lord, this matter must happen. Now verse 21, after he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. Now although Jesus already knew it beforehand, that does not mean that our Lord was rejoicing over this. Now when evil was rampant, the holy and righteous Lord, He will surely be troubled. Our Lord, He is the King of Kings. Eventually, He will judge the living and the dead. Ultimately, he will see that those who reject him and oppose him, they will all perish. But the Lord also mentioned that the Lord will not rejoice over the perishment of the evil. Now the king knows that the betrayer will eventually be sentenced to death, but the king will also not be happy because of the schemes of the evil one right now. So when we see the evil work of the world opposing God, opposing the church, opposing the truth, we should have the same feelings as the Lord and feel troubled also. But because we know this will surely happen, we have this assurance in our heart. And so when Jesus was troubled in spirit and He testified, let's read this together. I tell you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. Now, the greatest tra tragedy of this world happens on Judas. Now, Judas himself is the greatest tragedy. Think about it. How many people can be like Judas who can see God's glory personally? He can hear for his, with his own ears how Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. And for the three and a half years, Judas ate, slept, and walked and served together with Jesus. Together with the rest of the disciples, Judas has been talking about things of the heavenly kingdom and ministries. Perhaps even he himself thought that he believed in the Messiah. He also left everything behind to follow God and Jesus. So everyone will surely be very surprised and no one expects him to be the betrayer. Of course, we understand that he gradually turned into someone who is very greedy so among the band of the 12 disciples, he, Judas was in charge of money. Come to a point, we read that he stole the money from the treasury. But we knew that in the beginning, I think that 
at the initial stage where he followed Jesus, he may not have done so because of money. Think about it. Jesus' ministry is not wealthy. Jesus said, Fox, "Foxes have holes, and uh, but the man of pe-、uh, the son of man has has no place to rest his head." Now, if you want to go after money, you will follow wealthy, wealthy men. But when Judas first joined this team, I think that perhaps he also wants he also wants to pursue the heavenly kingdom. But maybe that is the heavenly kingdom he himself imagined. So initially, him he himself may not recognize his wrong motives, but regardless of his motives or character, we know that Judas eventually be- became a very terrible person. So eventually, he himself cannot achieve what he wanted, and so he then focus on money. He just focus on getting as much money as he can. So he betrayed the Lord for thirty pieces of silver. And so, as he follows the Lord, his heart of revenge and greed and worldliness is slowly revealed. And so, we don't know from which point、uh, his evil intent is being exposed. Perhaps as he continue to hear Jesus' sermons and look at Jesus' life, maybe he start to think. No, Jesus, the kind. He start to realize that the kingdom of God that Jesus preach is different from the heavenly kingdom that he himself wanted. Or sometimes when Jesus rebuke disciples, he may be provoked inside him, and so his、um, enmity towards God is being stirred up. Or when he faced this holy and righteous Lord, he, he his evil heart more and more cannot withstand this. Or within the deepest part of his spirit, Judas can sense that whenever Jesus look at him, is as if Jesus knew his inner heart. So we do not know exactly what, but I feel that there must be very profound spiritual things happening. But step by step. Judas moved toward the ultimate destruction, and he apostatized. And eventually, he had this thought. He demanded for thirty pieces of silver. Back then, if you want to purchase a slave, is about the price of twenty twenty five pieces of silver. So, ultimately, he only have one desire to gratify his flesh. But what is the amazing thing? That in the midst of this, no one disciple can tell that he is the betrayer. Only the Lord, who can see through human hearts, can see through Judas. So, so v- verse twenty-two, we see that his disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. So Jesus told. Told them beforehand, all of you are clean, but not everyone is clean. One of you. So when Jesus was washing their feet, maybe as he is washing Judas' feet, he he knew how Judas'、uh, mind is calculating and devising how to betray Jesus. But Jesus knew, but the disciples, none of them knew it, and so that tells us that in these three and a half years. That the Lord was with the disciples. That means the Lord has never ostracized or discriminated against Judas. There is no act of discriminating against Judas while the Lord was with them for these three and a half years. If the Lord, if the Lord, think that oh this Judas will、um, betray me eventually, then I don't look at his eyes. I just look at the eyes of. John and P- Peter. You Now sometimes、uh, we humans we are like this when we are petty. In our heart, we may also recognize the wrong Judas because we do not like a person's、uh, character or a person offended us. So for we humans, we are like this. But our Lord Jesus, even though He knew that Judas will never repent, but yet in His three and a half years with them, He didn't. He was not biased against Judas. He also revealed His love toward Judas. He always gave Judas the chance, so that he can turn him back, and that's why the disciples cannot tell it. 
because when they look at Jesus' response and when they look at Judas, they cannot tell who is the betrayer because this is a hidden matter. Now, verse twenty-three. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, and he was none other than John himself. So, in the book of John,、uh, John himself used this. Uh, phrase to describe himself: the disciple whom Jesus loved was reclining next to him, and Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, "Ask him which one he means." And leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, "Lord, who is it?" First, let us understand. John always described himself as the disciple whom the Lord loved. In other words, he lived under the love of Christ, and he was filled with gratitude in his heart. He was not someone who self righteous or self arrogant. And so, when he wrote the book of John, he wrote,、uh, and he wrote the book of First and Second John. He described God's love the best. He said, "We love because He first loves us. God first loves us. God first puts this love within us." And so, God allowed John to write the book of Revelation. So he revealed to this disciple the end times and how apostasy, etc., will happen. And so this disciple right now, this John, and another disciple was、uh, is Judas who betrayed Jesus. And we know that in historical background, usually when you look at the Last Supper drawn by Leonardo the artist, that's not the authentic one. But history tells us that in the Last Supper, it's a U shaped. Low table, and the Lord sat in the middle of the table. And now everyone is reclining as they dine. So that's the scene of the Last Supper. So everyone is just reclining. Now John is reclining, and the Lord sat in the middle. So John was reclining. On against Jesus, and so he whispered to the Lord, "Lord, who is this?" And now, on the other side, on the left hand side of the Lord, who is it? On the right hand side, it was John. On the left hand side, it was Judas. Now, that's what many Bible interpreters they they mention. If you read the book of Matthew, Jesus mentioned one of you will betray me. Everyone just asks Jesus, "Is it me? Is it me?" And Judas mentioned, "Is it? Is it you?" And then the Lord whispered to Judas, "It is you." But the rest of the disciples they didn't hear what Jesus said to Judas. So on the right hand of the Lord, it is John. On the left hand side, it was、uh, Judas. So we know that left and right hand side. They are the most important. Actually, Peter was not even on the left or right hand side. So Peter, Peter should be sitting quite far away because Peter motioned to、um, John to ask the Lord, "Who was it?" So Judas, we knew. He is on the left hand side, symbolizes symbolizing the the goat. The right hand side symbolizes the the sheep. So this is the entire picture. The im the imagery is like this. Now Peter is impulsive, so if he knew who was it, he may want to stop the person immediately. But what did the Lord say? Look at verse twenty six. Jesus answered. It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. So, how to explain this act? 
That means our Lord Jesus, He knew and He's prepared. But He still, he still wants to um, take this opportunity to f- take the last chance to take the last chance to turn back Judas. He still wants to show His love to Judas. In verse 27, As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So such an amazing thing. On the outside, he ate the bread. He used his mouth to eat it, but his heart was hardened like a stone. So from then on, Satan entered into him. Now this is a very profound statement. There is a lot of uh, profound theological issues. So some people ask, was it Judas who betrayed Jesus or was it Satan who betrayed Jesus? Was he the one who do it or Satan made him do it? Or some people say the Bible already prophesies. Was this set and determined by the Lord's sovereign will? Or was it Judas' choice? So it's a very difficult question. But in answering this, when we ask, was this the sovereign will of God? Or was it Judas' choice? Was th- was this the choice of Judas? What we can know is the truth that whatever Judas had done was not outside of his own will. Although the Lord already determined that Judas was the betrayer among the twelve disciples and Satan also chose him to be the betrayer. But when Judas did it, he was not under control. Now, Judas was not a robot. He had his own heart and mind and will. So he is a man. He has volition and he has... uh, he has uh, the ability to choose and he also didn't lack opportunities that the Lord has given him. In the three and a half years, he saw the miracles. He received the same extent of love that God has given to him as to other dis- disciples. And he received the comfort and rebuke of the Lord and the teachings of the Lord also. And he also received the loving eyes and perspective of the Lord. But yet, Amazingly, his heart is so hard, like it's as hard as a stone. So the disciples cannot tell that he is the betrayer. So a theologian said, Judas is the is the cleverest hypocrite, much worse than Pharisees. Because Pharisees, the moment you look at them, you will dislike them. And the disciples can can distinguish the hypocrit- hypocrit- hypocrism, hypocrisy of Pharisees. But no one can tell and can, uh, can recognize how terrible Judas is. So that is, a, that is the cleverest hypocrite. Because the devil masquerades as an angel of light, deceiving the whole world. Now, in the team of the 12 disciples, Judas, he is the wheat. He is the wheat. So some people asked, was it Judas who betrayed Jesus or uh, did Satan feel Judas so that Judas betrayed Jesus? So, during the Last Supper, the devil already plant the thought of betraying Jesus into the mind of Judas. So it sounds as if it was Satan who incited Judas to do this. Now we know that Judas himself had responsibility, but how is he responsible? Now if this heart was given him by Satan, and Satan also stir him up or incites him, to do certain things, then how can Judas be held responsible? Now we first talk about the heart of Judas. Mm. 
Judas prepared his heart to be used by Satan. So Judas prepared. After Judas prepared himself, then Satan can work like this in his heart. So how did Judas prepare himself? Did Judas call out to Satan to ask Satan to fill me? It was did he prepare in that way? No. So you must understand spiritual words. Now every time when Judas reject Christ's love and the word of Christ, that is preparing his heart for Satan to use. So in these three and a half years, every time when he hear the teaching of Jesus, he had this disbelief in his heart, and he has this opposition. So when Mary break the jar of fragrance and want to anoint Jesus, he rebuked Mary, and a lot of such things happen. Such that eventually, when when the Lord gave him the bread, there's no tinge of grat gratitude in him, and his heart was like stone. And the Bible tells us that after eating the bread, Satan entered his heart. So Jesus first shared his love with Judas, but after eating that, his heart was hardened, and Satan entered into him. So you have to understand that throughout history, there were many heresies and apostasies. Things, uh, people and people that oppose the church, people who follow another gospel, and they were, they were after, they were going after the step of Judas. So when they hear the pure gospel, the more they hear it, the more they hide their hearts. Because the more they hear it, the more they are accused, and so they start to have opposition, and they start to think that this is not the gospel. This is uh, the teaching invented by the pastor himself. So they have this kind of heart, because the gospel rebuilt their inner motives, and when all their inner motives were being exposed, they could they could not be humbled, and they say that I'm not like this. So this is not overnight. You know, then they they just go against a person and fight with a person overnight. I keep telling you, three and a half year, three and a half year. So slowly, slowly, he became a terrible person. So eventually, it was proven that his whole life was never blessed. But in these three and a half years, there's a lot of preparation work where Judas prepare his heart to go into enmity with the Lord, and he has to be responsible for that. So after all the preparation were done, then this person is ready for Satan to use. So there's a lot of profound spiritual meaning within this. So this is the depth of interpreting the Bible. We cannot just merely look at a person at the carnal level. What a person do, what a person does physically, behind that there will be spiritual factors, and on top of the human sin, there is the uh, work of Satan, and and. The world is a um, believer's enemy, and all these factors come together. So you cannot say Judas' heart is very good; he really loved the Lord. If it's not for Satan to incite him, uh, Judas would not have betrayed him. So you cannot say like this because um, Judas himself is rejecting God, and the more he hear God's word, the more he resists God's word. Now, of course, Satan can give us evil intent. But Satan cannot control our hands and legs. The Bible tells us, you must put to you must put to death the misdeeds of the body by the help of the Holy Spirit. So, Romans told us that by the Holy Spirit you must put to death the misdeed of the bodies. So the misdeeds of the bodies is carried out through actions. No doubt you may have the thoughts, but when you carry it out in action, you have to be responsible for what you have done. Because when you have carried it out in actions, that is the entire state of your spirit. Now you say that Holy Spirit, and now you say that Judas 
did not have the Holy Spirit, how can He put to death the mistakes of the body? Now for us, if we are born again, and if we didn't rely on the Holy Spirit to put to death the mistakes of our body, and we allow Satan to insinuate us, to lie, to commit adultery, etc., then we are giving the devil a foothold and griefing the Holy Spirit. So we realize that when we keep giving the devil a foothold, then we cannot overcome the desires of our flesh. And so some people told Pastor, no, it's very hard for me to overcome. It's very hard for me not to look at unhealthy things. Why? Because you keep living and giving a foothold for the devil. And so you keep on sinning. Now the Lord understands the structure of our soul. Now of course, Judas was without the Holy Spirit. And so his heart was always uh, under insinuations. But we believers, we must not give the excuse that I have a lot of insinuations from the devil. The more you are insinuated by sin, you must all the more be troubled and humbled before the Lord and the Lord will lift you up. And when you are so miserable, you realize you cannot rely on yourself, then you hold on to the Lord and then the God's mercy and power will come upon you. The more you are self-righteous, the more you claim that I'm without sin, I'm without wrong, everyone live like this and so I can live like this also. But when you are so self-righteous, then you realize that the same evil work that incites Judas to betray Jesus will also um, control you, your, control your emotions and mind more and more. So we have to understand some spiritual things. Of course, we say that Judas is totally um, without the Holy Spirit. Judas is totally not blessed. But we, with the Holy Spirit, we need to live by the Holy Spirit. So now, at the Last Supper, Judas rejected God's love and Satan entered into him. From then on, he's proven that he could not be turned back. And so verse 27, since Jesus said, do quickly what you want to do. So this is very scary words. That means that Jesus had stopped revealing his love to Judas and stopped turning him back. So Jesus said, uh, what you are about to do, do quickly. So it's as if uh, the Lord's words coincide with what Judas was about to do. Now verse 28, But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Jesus had changed has charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. So we knew that uh, what Judas kept doing was to serve or use money to help the poor. These were things that Judas always did. But verse 30, as soon as Jesus had taken uh, as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. So this was a very negative ending. When we look at the book of John, we realize that John liked to use the term day and night. So there is spiritual meaning attached to day and night. Now Judas when he went out, it was night. Of course, according to the timing, it was night time. But that also that also uh, represent uh, eternal darkness. So from this moment, Judas was walking toward eternal destruction. And that was the end of Judas. And later on, we knew. Let's turn again to another uh, passage. Zacharias, uh, Zach, Zachar, Zachariah, chapter 11. I told them. So this was Zechariah's words to the Jewish leaders. But the words of the Old Testament became the New Testament's prophecy. So many Psalms of David 
A lot of words of the Psalms were messianic Psalms, meaning、uh, you know many people、uh, uh, betrayed me, but my God will not abandon me, etc. So Zacharias told them. Uh, Uh, said this verse. I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it. So they paid me thirty pieces of silver. And then verse thirteen, and the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter. The handsome price at which they price me. So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord to the potter. And so this was done by Judas. So Judas betrayed Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. And the next day, we saw that、uh, Jesus was arrested. And Matthew chapter twenty-seven told us that Judas saw this and he regretted, and he he found the、uh, chief priest, and the chief priest mentioned that you have to be responsible. And then he hanged himself to commit suicide. So Judas could only regret, but he could not repent because he never believed that Jesus was the Christ. And so, before he hanged himself, he threw the money in the in the temple, and this money was used to buy a few to bury people. And so, this is the few of the blood. And so, these are all recorded in the scripture, and that was how Judas' life ended. Is All a tragedy. Now, if I ended, if I end like this here, it's too negative. So I need to give you、uh, three conclusions. So please hold,、uh, please hold on to those. This conclusion. So what does the passage today tell us? First, no matter how savagery is evil, God's good will will be fulfilled. In other words, God will be victorious. Have you heard this? Satan will have his hour, but God will have his day. Now, evil may be may may seems to win for a moment, but eventually, if you look at the whole picture, God is victorious. So, for a tiny moment. The devil may have、uh, seems to win to destroy my family, destroy my body. For a moment, it make me very miserable. Now Jesus Christ, he hang on the cross for six hours. But what happens? Eventually, he con he was victorious eternally. Now in our lifetime spiritual battle, during suffering, we need to hold on to the promises. Now. Judas' betrayer brought about the fulfillment of the cross. So do not lose your faith or hope because of temporary temporary suffering or darkness. Because of this problem, then you will pray for your family and those whom you love. And second point that we need to hold on to is in the in the church of the Lord. Do not selectively love people. Now, to this passage, after reading it, what we need to learn is: do not anyhow try to find who is the Judas. Even the disciples do not know after spending three and a half years with him. So, in the church, I always hear people say, "I do not like this brother or that sister. He or she is hypocrite. Hypocrite." Or some people say, "I can love everyone, but I cannot love hypocritical people." Now, Judas is the most hypocritical person. He's so hypocritical that no one can tell. So, the hypocrites that you can distinguish, they are still not fake enough, because you yourself is also a little hypocritical. So, you use your own hypocrisy, hypocrisy to、uh, to evaluate other people's hypocrisy. And you claim, you know, I used to be hypocritical like this in the past, but now I'm not. I I know this person is hypocritical. Actually, you yourself is still hypocritical in some way. Now, for the case of Judas, before he complete his mission of betraying Jesus, none of the disciples can tell that he is the betrayer. So the application and learning for us is in the church of God, 
we always bring about divisions because we are too subject、uh, subjective. No, ah,、uh, my personality suits you better, or so and so is more similar with another person, etc. So all these things、uh, oppose the unity of the Church of God. So I'm really touched by how Jesus treat treated Judas in the three and a half years. Even though Jesus already knew that Judas is going to betray him, but how did Jesus treat Judas? So how you treat? Your brethren beside you, if you, no matter how you think of that person, you must put down your impression of him. You need to feed your enemies when they are hungry or thirsty, and then by doing so, you are you are heaping coals, you are heaping burning coals on their head. If they do not appreciate, that become the fire of judgment on them. But if they accept your grace, that becomes the fire that burns away their passion. And they will be blessed. So we must not give in to our subjectivity to destroy the church or to spoil relationship between brethren. And finally, as we hear this message, if you are about to faint because of fear, because you fear that you yourself is Judas, because this is a cursed person. He is the representation of everyone who's cursed, and if you are afraid of taking after his step, because many a times you also resist God's word when、uh, you are not able to submit to whatever was preached by pastor. But when you hear today's message, and you worry that what if in the end, when I come to my end, I'm I'm like Judas. What happens if you have such fear? Then I thank. God for it because it's very likely that you are not Judas. You must quickly humble down. Judas will never humble down, and Judas will never repent even after hearing words of warning. But now, today when we hear the words of warning through such a negative example, we need to pray that God help us not to follow the steps of Judas. That means we have understood the word of God. Now I'm not God. I I cannot read into your inner hearts. So many years. I've been leading the church. Many things I only come to know about it when things happen. Then I can realize what humans really want in their heart. What is their real motive? I am also not God, but I can only tell you God's word because God's word is light. But as I preach, I know some people as they hear the word they get more and more humbled. But some people. As they serve with more and more anointing, but their and and when they serve more and their life is more humble, I need to pray and give thanks for such people. Now, when you pray for me, I always pray that as I serve and preach with more anointing, my heart need to be more humble, and I preach with authority. And when off stage, I need to counsel you with love and humility. May God also give you this prayer. After hearing today's message, do not bring fear home. Remember, Judas cannot repent. Eventually, he hang himself. But for you, you can be humble and repent. And then we thank God. Then you may be like a weak Peter or a weak John.、Uh, next week we will talk about Peter. Now let's pray. Lord, we thank you for using your word to warn us. And eventually, you use your promise to comfort us, Lord. Before you, we do not know how to put it, because such a great grace actually come upon us. We are unworthy, but because of you, you first love us. You intervene into our life, and you did did not、um, let loose. Of our of us, so and you allow us to respond to you and accept you. So today, as we hear your word, no matter、uh, what kind of opposition we hold on to in the past, but we pray that all these are merely our temporary weakness, but help us not to be permanently weak. But by the Lord, help us stand up again. Lord, please、uh, support and sustain your people. And help us in our weakness, Lord. We thank you.
And we pray that today's message will not just bless everyone here, but especially in the end times, let, let such message be a warning that the church and preachers of the Lord will be alert and not get into apostasy. Lord, we thank you and we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.